What is up everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great and I hope you're all staying safe. I welcome you all to today's VR Friday video. And today's video is super action packed, that's why I'm calling it the all-in-one guide to the Oculus Quest 2. Because in today's video I'm going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know from the games I think you should be playing, how to enable 90Hz, and how to unlock secret IPD options on the Oculus Quest 2. As well as trying out the Oculus Link, since a lot of you have been telling me you have issues with it, today's video is super action-packed, and I hope you guys enjoy it. A lot of you have just started off on VR and this is your very first headset. Congrats, welcome to the team. Yesterday I actually went on a virtual concert with my friend and it was a, a lot of fun. Sure, it was quite a bit of a different experience, but hey, if that's all we can do nowadays with everything happening around the world, that was absolutely incredible. Don't worry, the hat is disappearing very, very soon. I'm getting a haircut today. If you are new to VR, you are obviously looking for some quality good games to play, but VR games can be expensive so you want to make sure you choose the right ones. So today I'm going to tell you which ones I personally think you should begin on, describe them to you a little bit, and tell you what upgrades they have on the Quest 2. Because a lot of games have actually started coming out with updates for the Quest 2, making use of its better hardware. After that, I will also tell you about how to enable 90Hz on the Oculus Quest, because it is doable, and that way you can make use of it by playing some of these games, and I will try the Oculus Link. Because a lot of you are saying you have issues with the Oculus Link, and I want to try that out, see if I can help you guys in any way. So, starting off, we have Super Hot. If you guys don't know what Super Hot is, it is a VR game that I have been playing for quite some time where you fight red dudes with guns and anything you can find. This game has a premise of time only moves when you move, meaning that everything will happen in slow motion until you start moving. This game has gotten quite a few nice upgrades, including enhanced visuals and support for 90 hertz whenever that becomes officially available or you use the tactic at the end of this video. So Super Hot is one of those games that did actually get the 90 hertz refresh rate so you will get to see all that slow motion matrix style quality movement in 90 hertz beautiful smooth 90 hertz with enhanced visuals of course. Now I have played a lot of this game it is super fun and I definitely definitely recommend it. The next game we have on the list is Arizona Sunshine. Now I've talked about Arizona Sunshine and the updates it got in a video previous to this but Arizona Sunshine is for any of you that enjoy zombie shooter games. Arizona Sunshine has gotten a bunch of updates including shaders, yes you actually get shaders now, enhanced visuals, uglier zombies and a lot lot more. All these these updates came out for the Oculus Quest 2 and as a matter of fact, a few of them are actually compatible with the Oculus Quest 1. If you guys in any way, shape or form like zombie shooters or just want to try get into them in VR, this is a great way to do so. This game is absolutely amazing and lets you play through a lot of different levels in a lot of different environments. It also has a pretty nice storyline keeping you engaged in the game. So this is certainly one that I need to recommend to you guys. Next game we have on the list is Gravity Lab, and Gravity Lab is a pretty damn cool game. This game is for any of you interested in playing around with physics. It's based on getting you, building your own machines, your own contraptions, playing around with physics in this magical space-like place. The aim of the game? Well, have fun and get these items or balls or whatever you want to call them into their final container. Now this game has come out with a bunch of updates for your Oculus Quest 2. For example, more complex materials, a higher resolution, and support for that beautiful, beautiful 90 hertz. And I am really digging the 90 hertz, because as I will show you guys later, there's actually an option in experimental features to turn on the 90 hertz mode for your Oculus Home. And I have been playing around with this and it is so smooth, so good, I'm absolutely loving this in games, and I love seeing it in action and working. It just adds to the smoothness, and smoothness is important in VR because motion sickness. So this game is certainly on my list. Now, the next game on my list is Beat Saber. I couldn't go this video without mentioning it. Everybody knows what it is, but just in case you don't, this is a rhythm-based game getting you to destroy blocks to the rhythm holding lightsabers. There's something about this game that just makes you feel amazing, and if you somehow don't know what it is or don't have it, you should probably get it. I play this game with my mom. It's absolutely great. It's now been updated with a multiplayer mode, allowing you to play with friends, allowing you to see what other players are doing 
and adding a little bit more competition. It's also been redesigned with a brand new UI, and I feel like realistically this should be my number one because it's my most played, but I feel like you guys are here for the games that you don't know about. And therefore, I knew I had to put it in, but I didn't want to put it in at the very beginning. Let's move on to the next game. The next game we have on the list is Apex Construct. Now, if any of you like adventure games, this one's for you. This game has incredible bow mechanics and pretty damn nice visuals, and it has been updated for the Oculus Quest 2. The game has received better visuals, has no foveated rendering, new audio effects, and now has a ragdoll on the NPCs, just to add a little bit more to the gameplay. Now, this game was already good as is without all of this. Them adding this only makes it better. This certainly needed to be on my list. So for any of you adventurers out there, this one is certainly a great game to try out. Now, the next game we have on the list is Trover Saves the Universe. Trover Saves the Universe is for all of you out there that want to try out something different. This game is made by the creators of Rick and Morty. And if you don't know what Rick and Morty is, but in this game, it is entirely something different. You play the game from the perspective of somebody else, meaning you are in somebody else's body controlling a different body. I know, sounds confusing, but this game is great, and if you want to try out something different and want to have some fun, certainly check it out. This game has been improved with a higher resolution and higher frame rate, making playing this game even more fun. So if you guys are looking for something different, want to try out something new, certainly check this one out. The next game we have on my list List, and this is going to be the last paid game after this I'm gonna do a few free games for you guys is in death unchained now This is a pretty cool game. I've actually done a full-blown review on this This game has gotten enhanced visual elements and better viewing distance meaning you can now see further and Graphics have been enhanced now. This is another game for all you out there that love first-person shooters This game also has a unique infinite replayability because the map here changes every time you play. This is what makes this game so fun according to me because you never know what's lurking behind the corner. And if you want to check out the review on that game, please check it out right up here. But now let's move on to a few free games. So the first game we're looking at is Rec Room. And a lot of you have heard about Rec Room, but I'm not sure if you know, Rec Room has actually released a few updates just for the Oculus Quest 2. Now this was criticized by many because there is actually a few new levels that only Quest 2 players can play, meaning you can't play with your friends if they have an Oculus Quest 1. But Rec Room has also released a few updates just for the Oculus Quest that aren't room updates. For example, they have optimized the Isle of Lost Skulls just for the Oculus Quest 2. Now, Rec Room is a social app comparable to VRChat, except it's less hostile, if I do say so myself. So if you guys are into social apps, or who knows, we might do the next meetup in Rec Room. Everybody's been asking me to do the next meetup in Rec Room. So we might do the next meetup in Rec Room instead of VR chat. So there you go. That's game number one for free that you should try out on your Oculus Quest. Next game we have is Hand Physics Lab. And I don't know how I could go without mentioning this. So of course it needs to be mentioned. I also mentioned this in my last video where I was talking about game updates for the Oculus Quest 2. Now Hand Physics Lab is a game where you can play with hand tracking for the Oculus Quest 2. Now, of course, this is a really cool feature that the Oculus Quest headsets have where they track your hands without the need to use control. Hand Physics Lab is a game or an experience, depending on how you look at it, that takes full control and use of that. Because in this game, you can play around with just your hands, touching, grabbing and moving elements all around the map, and it is just truly amazing. And this game has recently released an update called the Grip Update, allowing better physics and kind of smoother gameplay in the game, making it even better and more realistic. And if you guys know, I absolutely love realistic physics in VR. That's why I loved Boneworks. And this is a massive step. If all games could have physics like this, oh, it would be absolutely amazing. This game had to be on my list. Now, the next game I have here is another hand-tracked game. This is Elixir. If you haven't heard of Elixir, it's an officially released game by Oculus just to play around with hand tracking. In this game, you get to become a wizard's apprentice and screw up all her plans that she's ever had for you, making potions, killing eyeballs, yes, killing eyeballs, and playing around with a bunch of different hand models. This game is really cool and gets kind of trippy after a while when your hands begin changing into different models because you've tried to move certain fingers around and other fingers move around, which makes your hand just lose IQ points as fast as I lose them during every maths lesson. This game is certainly worth a try out. And if you love playing around with hand tracking, this is certainly a must have. So on our list, we have one more game. And this game is loved by many, including my 
myself. That is Echo VR. If you have not played Echo VR, it's absolutely amazing. In fact, it's what Zuck was playing during the conference. So yeah, Echo VR, great game, very nice. In Echo VR, you are a robot floating through space in zero gravity with discs, and you have to throw the discs into the opponent's gate. Yeah, let's call it a gate. <laughs> this game is super cool and allows you to experience zero gravity in VR for free. Not only that, but it's a great, great co-op game. And of course, how could I go this video without telling you guys about Virtual Desktop? Virtual Desktop is something I use personally on a daily basis, especially if I'm doing PC VR. Now, Virtual Desktop is, for all of you out there that have a VR-capable PC, basically allowing you to play Steam VR on your Oculus Quest wirelessly. You install the Virtual Desktop streamer onto your computer and install the Virtual Desktop app onto your headset. And this wirelessly allows you to play PC VR games. Now, as I said earlier, you do need a VR-ready PC for this, but once you have that, you can wirelessly play it. Of course, as long as you have a five gigahertz network, you're pretty much set. I absolutely love this. I've been using it a lot. In fact, I've been using it more than the Link, and therefore this is something that I absolutely need to put on the list, even though I technically count it as a tool more than a game. It's changed the way I play PC VR and therefore it deserves a spot on this list. Just looking through my library, there's a lot more incredible games that absolutely deserve to get mentioned here. But if I were to mention them all, we'd take 40 minutes. So a few of them being, of course, VR Chat because it's a free social app that I used to meet up with people multiple, multiple times, and games like Richie's Blank Experience. If you want to take your height scare experience to the next level by walking a plank on the gazillionth floor of a building, and then of course jumping off, games like these are what make an experience in VR that little bit more real and trick your brain into thinking that, hey, something is wrong. And I've showed this to multiple people, and it's really enjoyable watching them scream while they're falling. Now, yet again, there's much more games that really should be mentioned here, so please tell me which games are your favorite and which games you're playing on your Oculus Quest 2 right now in the comments section below, since I really love hearing your guys' feedback and hearing what you guys enjoy playing in VR. Now this video is a little bit longer, but that is because I would love to get everything into it for you guys. This is kind of an all-in-one video. So now we're going to move on to enabling 90Hz on the Oculus Quest. Now you can actually enable 90Hz by going into the Oculus Quest, going into settings, clicking on experimental features, and enabling it there. However, I'm almost certain this only enables it for Oculus Home. Now if you do want to enable 90 hertz and play it on the games that support it but you don't want to wait for oculus to release it there's another way of enabling it and that is through the power of adb you guys know how much i love adb so jumping straight into SideQuest, you open up SideQuest, connect your device in developer mode i have a few videos already showing you how to enable developer mode on the oculus quest so make sure to check those out i won't be going through it here you connect your quest to SideQuest. once SideQuest sees your device you click on this little button up here paste in the command that i will have in the description, and this command basically enables 90Hz on the Oculus Quest. You will have to input this command every time you restart your headset, but until you restart it, you have 90Hz, and it stays there. So if you're one of those people that just puts your headset to sleep, you'll get to keep it forever. I also made a video on how to connect your Oculus Quest 1 to your phone, so you can actually enable 90Hz on the go by using ADB commands straight from your phone onto your Oculus Quest, so make sure to check that video out here in case you don't have a computer or want to enable it without a PC. Now, if you ever want to change it back, just change this little value here back to 72, and you'll have your Quest 2 back to 72 hertz. However, if you do have a PC, I have now been made aware that SideQuest actually has gotten an update, meaning all you have to do is you just enter right here and select your refresh rate from here, making it super, super simple to change your refresh rate if you have SideQuest. However, if you don't have SideQuest or want to use your phone, you will still need to use the ADB commands shown earlier, or just restart the headset, like I said. Now, let's move on to the elephant in the room. So many of you have been contacting me telling me that the Oculus Link doesn't work for you. Now, this is very interesting because yesterday I was actually using Virtual Desktop to go to a concert with my friend, as I said in the beginning. So, Virtual Desktop works perfectly fine for me, but I actually haven't checked out the Oculus Link yet. So, let's do that together right now and see why you guys are having so many issues connecting your quest to the oculus link so i've got my oculus link cable right here and we are going to see 
whether I can connect this to the Oculus Quest and get the Oculus Link working successfully without any issues. Now, I do know that there's also issues with Facebook accounts getting banned, but I didn't really want to get into that because I feel like that's a whole separate issue and it is getting solved. So if your Facebook account is one of the ones that got banned for absolutely no reason whatsoever, use the link down in the description below to submit a support ticket and hopefully Oculus reaches out to you pretty fast. I've also heard a lot about a lot of orders getting cancelled and I actually had a comment about this. I don't know how I feel about that because they really shouldn't be getting cancelled for no reason whatsoever. But again, submit a support ticket and hopefully they'll get back to you pretty fast. So I'm going to allow data transfer on the headset. I'm also going to click continue. And there we go, it showed up. Enable Oculus Link in beta. I'm gonna click enable and it seems that my computer has actually recognized the headset. It is saying that connect your headset. It is connected in green right here. And going into devices, I can see my Quest 2 and Touch right there. However, I am not seeing anything inside the headset. That's interesting. Oh, we're in. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's, that's very bad. And this time it works without any issue. So yeah, so it was just the hub. So I can see right inside my headset, my Oculus Home, from my PC and I'm having no issues with it. But I did want to test it just to make sure that it wasn't just an issue that everyone was having. I'm personally having no issues with it. Uh, if you're interested in the hardware I'm running, I'm running an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X and an AMD RX 5700 XT. And that's the hardware I'm running, that's the GPU I'm running. And personally, I don't use the Oculus Link. I use virtual desktop because wireless and you guys know how much I love wireless. So there you go. If you guys want to get in contact with me or want to get in contact with our technical support. Yeah, we have technical support on the Discord. Join the Discord. Tell me what's up. Tell me what's happening. Tell me what isn't working. And hopefully we can get that solved and fixed for you guys. But for now, I can't really fix it because I don't know, see the problem you guys are having. I'm having no problems with the link. Tell me if you're having problems down in the comment section below. Okay, now the next one is very, very exciting because the next thing that we are going to talk about is the IPD slider. A lot of people hate it and a lot of people are criticizing it for not being right for their IPD. A lot of people absolutely loved the last quest IPD slider because it gave so many options. Now with this one you have much less options, in fact you only have three, but I was browsing reddit today and I found out that you can actually access hidden settings on that IPD slider. So by gently pushing the lenses to the side you can access setting 1.5, then pushing it gently yet again you can access setting 2.5. Now as many of you may know, the old oculus quest actually had two displays, two OLED panels, one for each eye, and those panels panels moved when you moved the IPD. However, in this one, it's a single LCD panel that doesn't move. However, what a lot of people don't know is that the images on those LCD panels actually do move. So as you can see, they are normally set to move from setting one and two and three. However, when you do set it to 1.5, it does actually flick into another option, as you can see by this Reddit post right here. And when you flick it to 2.5, it does actually get set to yet another setting. If this is really setting 1.5 and 2.5, I'm not entirely sure, but it does actually have more settings on moving the on-screen LCD than just 1, 2, and 3. So for any of you out there that think that setting 1, 2, or 3 isn't enough for you, or you want to go in between, make sure to try this out. But do remember, you're trying this out at your own discretion. I don't see how this could possibly damage the headset in any way, shape, or form. And I have done it myself just to try it out, and it's perfectly fine. But do remember this. So let me know, will this help you out? Are you already using setting 1.5 or 2.5? And if not, which setting do you use? A lot of you were telling me you have issues with IPD. As I said, I technically only have one eye, so I'm just on setting two for myself. But I want to get information out for everybody, no matter if it affects me or not. So today's video was super exciting, super action-packed. We got a lot of information in there, a lot of games. Make sure to tell me guys if you liked it. If you did, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this one works too. We're trying to grow the channel. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. This is absolutely insane. Thank you everybody new joining the community. And if you guys like this types of videos, I post tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So if you think that floats your boat, if you want to join our lovely community, we have a Discord down in the description below. We also have a Reddit where I want to see you guys posting your spicy memes. And if you guys would like to be notified about future content, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video, which will probably be a VR video, because let's be real, I'm super hyped about this now. Peace. Just looking through my library, there's a lot more incredible games. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm zoomed in.